Now, this is the mid-2012 MacBook Pro, but the year is 2021, so the question is, is it still worth it? to another video first and foremost as always i would like to thank you guys for all of the support it is greatly appreciated this channel slowly grows every single day and i cannot thank you guys enough if you are new to my channel go ahead and subscribe drop a like look forward to the future and let's just continue growing this channel now in today's video we will be discussing the mid 2012 unibody macbook pro now when i first purchased this one it was 379 dollars this same exact macbook pro now is going for well under $300. So is it worth it in 2021? This is a 2.5 gigahertz i5, all right? So it can handle a good little bit of task, okay? But most of these will be coming with four gigabyte RAM and an HDD. If I was you, this is exactly what I did. I upgraded the RAM to eight gigabytes. I put a 500 gigabyte SSD in it and it runs like a champion, okay? That is what you will have to do to keep this up and running in 2021. Now, it does not run Big Sur. It stops at Catalina, but to me, I don't even care. This is honestly my on-the-go YouTube editing slash everyday small task computer, okay? If you are a beginner YouTuber or you may be in college, this is something you should definitely look into, okay? So for $300, you can definitely get something that can video edit, photo edit, and handle your classwork all at the same time, okay? This computer is super underrated and it is super bang for your buck. Again, this computer is nine years old, but this nine-year-old computer is no slouch. Anytime that I need a quick video edited up and uploaded to YouTube, this is what I go to right here. The only time that I go to the big computer is whenever I need something a little bit nicer. I wanna switch it up a little bit and I don't want anything too basic, but if it's been a while since I've uploaded and I just need to hurry up and pump a video out, I will be using my MacBook. This is probably the best investment that I made towards YouTube so far because it has definitely been worth the money, especially after the upgrades. Now, specifically to the people who are out there for beginner YouTubers, look, so for $300, you get all of this extra storage. You can run iMovie, you can edit all of these photos, make your thumbnails through Canva. Like there's so much stuff that you can do. This is the best bang for your buck entry level YouTubing. Now, I know a lot of people out there who are beginner YouTubers, they start recording with their phone. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? But with you copying the 2012 MacBook Pro, you could take that video footage off of your phone and you can airdrop it to this bad boy and open up iMovie. iMovie on the computer is a little bit more complex than what you get on your phone, okay? You get a little bit more options. It's a little bit more to it when it comes down to the computer, so you can overall make your videos better and grow your channel better and quicker just because like you're putting out good quality. Like you can still put out good quality when it comes down to iMovie on your iPhone, but there's nothing compared to like pulling out this bad boy, airdropping it to this, and then editing it on iMovie, okay? Now that is just from my experience because that is what I used to do. I still do it sometimes here and there. I actually started out YouTubing on an iPad Pro 12.9 inch. I ended up selling that and taking that money and getting this one, and I do not regret it whatsoever, okay? So that is just me speaking from my perspective, all right? Now, for you guys that may be in college, I know this is summertime, and I know very shortly people are gonna start looking into computers and stuff like that. Look, no slouch. Whatever assignment that you need handled, this will be able to handle it, okay? Projects, this can handle it. I am super confident, even, I mean, I do plan on going back to school and I am not gonna upgrade this bad boy. I'm literally gonna run this until it dies on me, okay? But why did I end up getting the mid-2012 that's non-retina versus getting the late 2012 that is retina? One, back then, the retina display was a little bit more, but also, anytime that you fool with the older model retina displays, those displays tend to go out. So that is not something that I wanted to risk. So I said, screw that. I'm not even gonna take a chance. So I'll take the non-retina display and I'll go from there. So if you guys are looking for a sub $500 computer, this is the way to go and you'll still have money to spare, okay? Again, once you upgrade that RAM and SSD, it's gonna boot up in like 
you know, the 30 seconds compared to like the minute, two minute range whenever you first get it with the HDD. Make those upgrades and you'll still have money left over to like, you know what I'm saying, get you some other stuff. Especially you YouTubers, you may go out and be able to get you a microphone or, you know what I'm saying, other stuff just to help you with your videos. You can get you a little ring light, whatever you may need for those videos. But I'm telling you, me being a YouTuber and content creator, this is hands down the best investment that I have made so far towards this, okay? I do not regret it. I've knocked out so many crazy projects and honestly, 75% of my videos are created on this, okay? I've only done one video on my actual like big computer and that's just because I just finished building it like a couple days ago. The rest of the videos well before that, been using this now some people may think that I've been using like DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut Pro or like some kind of crazier software no I've been straight up using iMovie iMovie gets the job done so that's what I'm sticking to now speaking of DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut for you guys who may actually want to run those programs unfortunately I would say stay away from DaVinci Resolve I have not run Final Cut Pro I don't plan on getting Final Cut Pro for this I actually plan on doing a Mac mini build to run Final Cut Pro but I have not run Final Cut Pro, so I have no experience or insight about that. But when it comes down to DaVinci Resolve, the playback is what is the killer, okay? Like DaVinci Resolve opens, it works, but it's that playback that kills you, okay? Now, from what I have seen on forums, this bad boy can support up to 16 gigabytes RAM, which is what you will need, but it is kind of hard to find the 16 gigabyte kit, okay? So this right here takes DDR3 RAM. So this is the RAM that I actually ended up getting. I'm just gonna try to focus in on that a little bit more. So DDR3 by Corsair. That is the RAM that you will need. And I mean, if you can find it in 16 gigabytes and it actually supports it up in here, go for it. You will have a way better experience when it comes down to DaVinci Resolve. But other than that, if you don't have 16 gigabytes of RAM, do not fool with DaVinci Resolve. 16 gigabytes of RAM will also help you with Final Cut Pro. Now you can possibly run Final Cut Pro on here, but it's it's really about that RAM, okay? You know, eight gigabytes of RAM only lets you do so much. So, I mean, just use iMovie. iMovie works like a charm. You'll get those videos knocked out. It actually gives you enough options to where like it doesn't look like a super basic video. You get way more transitions than you will get on your phone or your iPad. Like just stick to iMovie on this. But overall, is the mid 2012 MacBook Pro worth it in 2021? I will say yes, and I will stand firm on that until this bad boy runs into the ground. Hopefully, I can, you know what I'm saying, make another video like this in 2022, 2023, 2024. Like, I'm literally going to run this bad boy until it quits, okay? Now, just for like a recap of everything, I mean, it does not run up the Big Sur. It stops at Catalina, 2.5 gigahertz. You can put up to 16 gigabytes of RAM from what I heard, but I have 8 gigabytes in mind and an SSD in here. That boot time is going to be well under 30 seconds, super quick. It cannot run DaVinci Resolve. It may be able to run Final Cut Pro. I don't know because I haven't gotten Final Cut Pro, but when it comes down to DaVinci Resolve, you would be better off trying to put 16 gigabytes of RAM in here because that playback at eight gigabytes of RAM is, is crazy, okay? And then most of these come in at four gigabyte RAM as soon as you buy it, especially the ones that are under $300. That four gigabyte of RAM probably won't even open DaVinci Resolve, okay? Just to tell you that up front. If you are a beginner YouTuber, this is honestly the best way to go to get your hands on a computer, to edit your videos, edit photos if you're a content creator. If you just need something on the side, even though you may have like a huge setup, if you just want something on the side that can just handle those little small tasks of content creation, this is the way to go. I mean, it's under $300. You can't even beat it. And then after you've put, you know what I'm saying, like $100 in upgrades in it, this thing is going to run like a charm, okay? It, like you will have no problems out of it. It won't crash won't have any problems out of it so yeah that's it for today's video thank you guys for tuning in i hope you enjoy and i will see you guys in the next video i'm out